Greetings class, this is Dr. York Hammonds. Uh, we're in chapter eight now, still doing hypothesis testing. Uh, however, in chapter seven, we were only looking at single samples, doing hypothesis testing uh, about a claim based on a single sample. In chapter eight, we're actually looking at two samples. Uh, in section 8.1, we have to verify that the samples are independent samples and we have to know the population standard deviation for each of those two samples in order to do the z test um, with in order to find the difference between means for each sample so i thought we might look at how we could differentiate between uh, independent and dependent because we can only do this test with independent samples later in chapter eight we'll look at dependent samples so it says two samples are independent when the sample selected from one population is not related to the sample selected from the second population and then two samples are dependent when each member of one sample corresponds to a member of the other sample. Dependent samples are also called paired samples or match samples. Again, these paired samples or match samples we'll look at later in chapter eight. So let's look down at a couple of examples that they give you. Sample one. For example, one says weights of 65 college students before their freshman year begins and weights of the same 65 college students after their freshman year. This would be a dependent sample because we're looking at a person uh, before their freshman year and then their weight again at the end of their freshman year. So we couldn't do the testing in 8.1 with this particular type of sample. So let's look at number two. Scores for 38 adult males on a psychological screening test for attention deficit hyperactivity disorder or scores of 50 adult females on a psychological screening test for attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. Now this looks a lot more like the independent sample that you see in this upper picture. Uh, they aren't necessarily the same size. Uh, we only had 38 males, but we had 50 adult females. And there, we're not looking at a before and after. We're comparing males to females to independent samples. So this is the type of, uh, these are the type of sample sets, independent samples, that we could test for any differences in the means. So we're going to look at some examples from the uh, exercises at the end of the section. I'm on page 424 of your e-text, still in chapter 8, section 1. I'd like for us to look at number 5. Sample 1 is the maximum bench press weights for 53 football players. And sample 2 is the maximum bench press weights for the same 53 football players after completing a weightlifting program. So we're looking at exactly the same group of people before and after a treatment. That would be a dependent sample and we could not run the test on this group of people that we're going to run for 8.1. We would have to use a uh, different uh, type of test that we'll learn about later. So look at number seven. Sample one, the average speed of 23 power boats using an old hull design and the average speed of 14 power boats using a new hull design. So these two are actually independent because first kind of hint here is they're not the same size, so they can't be exactly the same. It couldn't be a before and an after. Um, but you also notice one, of the, one set is using an old hull design and then the other set is using a new hull design. So it wouldn't be like we would take the power boats and redesign them and then test them again. You're just comparing an older hull design to something, something new and see if there's a difference between the average speed for those power boats. In other words, we would want to know if the new hull design is increasing our speed. And then we uh, test that at a certain level to see if that difference is significant. So depending on the alpha, value you choose, you would determine whether it's significant. So we're going to look back at how the test runs to talk about significance. 
I've gone back to page 424 that has information about the type of testing that we're doing. Um, this particular distribution, testing the difference between means, if we're looking for a test statistic Z, then I'm going to take the observed difference minus the hypothesis difference and divide that by the standard error. So one of the notes that it tells you is that if the null hypothesis states that mu1 is equal to mu2, or mu1 is less than mu2, or mu1 is greater than or equal to mu2, then mu1 equal to mu2 is assumed and the expression mu1 minus mu2 is equal to zero. So we will be looking at testing if the means are the same or not. So this would say if you, this would be they are the same and their difference, the difference between them, if you have two things that are equal and you subtract them, you would get zero. So what are some things we have to know? We can run the two sample Z test uh, if we know the standard deviation for both the population standard deviation for both sample sets. The samples are random. Here's the key in today, knowing the samples are independent and that the populations are normally distributed or both the sample sizes are bigger than 30. The test statistic is mean one minus sample mean one minus sample mean two. And then the test statistic the standardized test statistic would be a Z value based on the difference in the means of the samples minus the difference in the means of the populations over the standard error of the mean, the difference in the standard error of the means, um, excuse me, the standard error of the means for the differences in the means for each set. So where that standard error is the population, excuse me, the variance of the first sample over the sample size plus the variance of the second sample over the sample size for the second sample, and then you take the square root of that sum. So they go through the process for uh, using the two sample t test. So we have to verify we have the standard deviations of the population standard deviations for each set, or that the sample sizes are bigger than 30. Um, we have to find our H sub O and H sub A, so we have to identify our null and alternative hypothesis. Uh, we have to know alpha, our level of significance, and we'll de determine critical values, uh, which you can use table for in Appendix B, or you can use uh, StatCrunch to find Z values, uh, Z critical values, depending on alpha. And if you do that, you can determine the rejection regions. We can find the standardized test statistic by running a Z test for two samples. And then we decide whether to reject or fail. Now, they're using a rejection region, but you can also use P values, which is what we'll be using today. It says if P is less than or equal to alpha, then you reject H sub O, the null hypothesis. Otherwise, fail to reject H sub O, the null hypothesis. So let's look at uh, some data and just have you see what that what making that decision would look like. We're going to look at question number 12. It says the claim is that mu1 is greater than mu2. Now this does not have an equality statement in it. So this would have to go with our H sub A. Now, if mu1 is greater than mu2, then that would say that, that we are looking at a claim of not, that the difference is not equal to zero. You'd have to look at this in terms of the difference. So if we were to take mu1 and subtract mu2 from it, we would think that the difference would be greater than zero. So that's not equal to zero. So if we look at alpha equal 0 0.10, and the population statistics are uh, uh, standard deviation for sample one, population is 40, and the population standard deviation for sample two is 15. 
we know the mean for the sample one is 500 and that the sample size for one is 100. The mean for the sample uh, two is 495 and the sample size for sample two is 75. We have all the information that we need in order to work this problem. So I'm going to make this a little smaller And I have to apologize. I believe I said that um, it, that we would do not equal. The claim here, mu1 greater than mu2, if I subtracted mu2 from both sides, that would be mu1 minus mu2 greater than zero. So I have to use the greater than zero for my alternative hypothesis. So if we go to StatCrunch, just like you'd done Z statistics in uh, chapters five and then the hypothesis testing in chapter seven, we go to stat, we go to Z stats, but this time instead of a one sample, we need a two sample because we're looking at the difference between two samples and we're just we have a summary they didn't give us columns of data now for the first sample the mean was 500 the population standard deviation for the first sample was 40 and the uh, sample size for population one was 100 for sample two the mean the sample mean is 495. The standard deviation, so the population standard deviation for sample two is 15. And the sample size for um, the second sample, N2, is 75. Our hypothesis test is that the difference between mu1 and mu2 is greater than zero and I'm going to store this information in my data table and I will close out the window and we have a statistical value that if they were asking you about the rejection region you could compare this but we can look at just the p-value so our p-value is 0 0.1256 and our alpha value from the problem was 0 0.10 so I'm just going to come down here and write this so we can compare these my alpha was 0 0.10 sorry 0 0.10 now is this p-value less than that alpha value and the answer is no it's not uh, 0.12 is more than 0 0.10 so since p is greater than alpha we fail to reject H sub O. Now, if we fail to reject H sub O, that means that we have no evidence to support the claim that the difference in the means, that there was a difference in the means and that it was greater than zero. So we do not have we do not have enough evidence, maybe I should write this down, we do not have enough evidence at the 10% level of significance to reject excuse me, not reject, to support the claim because the claim was that mu1 was greater than mu2 that's the alternative hypothesis so we fail to reject h sub o the null we do not have enough evidence at the 10 percent level of significance that's your alpha equal 0 0.10 or 10 percent to support that claim so we did this all based on a p-value